Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve LeetCode 33, which is search in rotated sorted array. Now, firstly, if you haven't solved the problem, find minimum in rotated sorted array, you should definitely do that first. And I have a video on that. If you have, then here we are. So behind the scenes, imagine this array was actually sorted first. So it was 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's now been rotated, which means all of the values have been shifted over. And if they ever go out of bounds, they go to the back here. So this array was actually rotated one, two, three, four times. Zero should originally be at the beginning. So it's been rotated four times over to get to the right. And so it's now four, five, six, seven, zero, one, two. So you can find the minimum value here with kind of a clever binary search, and that's covered in the other video, although we'll have to cover it a little bit again here. You can find that minimum value here, and that was the solution or the end to the other problem. That's basically the beginning of this problem. After we've located this pivot index here, or the minimum, you actually have a target to find. So we are looking for the index of where zero is, and if you can't find it, that's when you return minus one. Okay, so let's solve the same example. These are the same numbers. So the first thing to do is to find that pivot index or the value of the minimum. And we know that we can do that with a binary search. I'm not going to cover that. Watch the previous video. And you will come up with a pivot index or a value of the min index, which I'm just going to call min index here. Okay. So that is going to equal, well, in this case, it's going to be four is going to be where the minimum is. We run that algorithm to find that minimum index. We require that. Now, after you have that min index, we have a partition where we have everything to the left is this increasing range and you have everything inclusive and to the right is another range. If our target for this example, let's say we're looking for five. Well, we need to look in this range, which means that we want L to be zero, the first index, and we want R to be, what is this? Well, that's basically the min index minus one. So we want L and we'll say the condition to get there in a second. We want L and R to equal zero and I'm just gonna going to call the min index m. So actually, I'm just going to make it consistent over here. This is the min index, which is going to be located here, not the middle, it is the min index, we want l as zero and r as m minus one, we're searching for five, and we ended up in this range, because five is at least the first value. And it's at most the value that's the maximum or equivalently one less than the minimum. So we want to run this situation only in the case where t is at least our nums at zero. So it's at least the first value. And it's true, it's got to be at most the nums at m minus one, and t has got to be at most nums at m minus one, our min index minus one equivalently our maximum value. Okay, so that is our first situation. That's when we end up on the left bounds is following that rule. Okay, but now let's say our target was actually zero. Okay, and it could have been zero or one or two, all of those work. So in this situation, we want L and R to equal M, it could be inclusive in the min as well. So we want it to start at M, and we want it to go at most to the very end, which is actually index n minus one. So we want to start L at M and R to n minus one in the situation of what now you could just say this is an else here. Okay, that kind of works. Except the problem with this is that there's actually more than two situations. Why is that true? Well, here, it only looks like there's two situations, because there's basically this big left partition and this big right partition, boom, I just created a valid situation where there is no two partitions here, there's really only just the one partition, it's the original sorting where the minimum is at the beginning, the maximum is at the end, and they're all just increasing in order, there's no two partitions, these two situations work for every situation, that's not this one. So really, I'm just going to count this as kind of an edge case here, our target, it doesn't even really matter what it is in this case, because this is perfect range for binary search, you can just search for any value here. And so we want L and R to be traditional binary search. So L is going to be zero, and R is going to be the last index n minus one in the case that is particularly this, which is that the min index, which we're again, we're calling M here, where the min index is equal to zero. Okay, that's the only situation where this comes up is if your min index is zero, that automatically implies that it's always going to be sorted like this. And therefore, this is our third kind of edge case situation where we'd run a traditional binary search. 
Okay, so let's write our code. Now the first step is going to be exactly the same as just find the minimum in a rotated sorted array. So that's gonna be one binary search. So we'll get n is equal to the length of the numbers array. We are going to start l equal to zero and r equal to n minus one. And then we will run while l is less than r because we want to escape when they're equal to each other. Then we'll have that l and r both fall on the minimum index. We get m is equal to l plus r over over two integer division, so our middle index. If nums at m is greater than nums at r, that actually means that the min index is strictly to the right side. We want l is equal to m plus one. And then otherwise, if that's not true, well then m actually could be the min index, so we want to keep that. We set r equal to m. At the end of this, we will get our min index is either l or r. And so we'll just store that the min index, which I'm calling min i, that is equal to l, or r would also also work. Now we need to do another binary search knowing that we have this spot where it pivots. So we need to set up our bounds for our binary search, which is again just going to overwrite our L and R. If it's true that the min index is equal to zero, that is the edge case where we just wanna run a normal binary search. So we just set L and R to be zero and N minus one. Okay, so if that's not the case, then we have our more complicated situation. So we wanna say otherwise, if it's true that the target is at least nums at zero. So if it's at least the first value and the target is actually at most the maximum value. So if it's less than or equal to nums at min, I minus one. Okay, so this is basically checking if it's in the left partition. If it is, then we want L and R to be, well, we want L to be zero, and we want R to be the maximum, which is min I minus one, or the index of the maximum. Otherwise, if that's not the case, it's gotta be in the right partition. So we will set up our bounds so that L is going to be inclusive at the minimum index, and we want R to be up until the end of the array. Then from here, we're just going to write a traditional binary search. There's really nothing new here. While L is less than or equal to R, we need the equal sign here because we wanna check if it's that value when L and R are equal to each other. So while L is less than or equal to R, we get our middle index, which is equal to, as usual, L plus R over two. We say, hey, if the nums at the middle index is actually equal to our target, well, that means that we found it and we can return. Well, in this case, we want to return the index for the problem. So we return M itself. Otherwise, let's check if nums at M is less than the target. If that's true, our target is to the right of our middle. We need to update our left bounds and we wanna go past the middle index because it wasn't the middle index. So L is equal to M plus one in this case. And then otherwise we must have that the target was to the left of M. And so we update our bounds so that R moves over to be M minus one. That's just a traditional binary search, which always runs the risk of not finding it. If that's true, our L and R would crisscross and we'd escape this loop. And the problem specifies in this case that we want to return minus one if we couldn't find it. Okay, so let's just give that a run. And as we can see, that works. Okay, so the time and space complexity of this is pretty interesting. Now the space complexity we can get right away is pretty easy. That's actually just constant space because we're not really storing anything. However, the time complexity of this, what are we actually doing here? Well, we're doing a binary search once, which is log n time. And then we're really just doing another binary search here. We set up our bounds for another binary search. And so we did two binary searches. Well, that means that the time complexity of this, that's basically big O of two log n, I guess, except we ignore constants. So really you just get this as, this is basically a log n complexity, which is which does fit the specification it's basically just doing log n twice, which is still big O of log n. Okay, and let me just zoom out to make sure you can see all of the code on one screen. It's kind of a lot of code, so that's difficult, but uh, here you go. That's all of our code. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day.